G'day everyone, Adam here going overland. This week I've made some snow chains up. That's right, we are hitting the snow, hopefully. And um, yeah, we're getting prepared for it. So one of the hobby things I like doing is tinkering and getting ready for trips like that. So rather than try and hire chains this size with ties, I just made my own. So a couple of bucks, a couple of weekends, bit of fun, good fun learning. And I get to test them out before we get to go. So really important to me knowing what works how it works before we get in the conditions where it's freezing cold so join us along i'll show you how i made them show you the cost as well pretty cheap really and um yeah a bit of fun making them all right give us a thumbs up hope you like this week's video and um hey if you're interested let us know cheers guys Just finished the first prototype. Works really well. Really happy with it. Come up better than I thought. Took me about an hour to get to this stage. Um, that's with pulling different tools out, figuring out what to do, lengths and stuff like that. I still gotta put all the um, chain back together and weld it up. That'll probably take another hour. But really, really happy. Worked out it's scare up, probably gonna cost about 30 bucks a tire. Um, and then I got a full set chains yeah really good not bad for a um, Saturday morning effort so basically I just looked at some pics online first different shapes and designs just to get an idea of what it should look like and then I set about eyeballing different lengths of chain across the tire and around the tire it took a couple of goes to get it right but once I had it right, I could duplicate that length for the other side of the tire and for the chain that goes around the tire, I could just use that one size once I had it right. And then I set about just joining the chain together, forming its shape and just eyeballing what looked right, the distance apart. And once I was happy with that, I could duplicate that for the next tire. There's no point me putting down how many lengths across the tire or chain link I used because if you're running different size tires, um, it won't suit your car. So you've got to remember, rim size is important, the height of the tire and the width of the tire. Uh, if you're running different to me, uh, my size won't suit your vehicle. So full disclosure, when you're going somewhere where there's snow and ice and you need snow chains, there's a quite a few rules you've got to check into. Number one, is it required where we're going? Luckily enough, for a four drive, it's not required. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna call these snow chains for off-road use only. Uh, much like when you buy suspension that's over two inch lift or anything like that. With a little fine print, off-road use only. So we don't need snow chains on the road. If it's snowy and icy, I'm probably gonna use them. Uh, another thing you gotta look into where you go is what sort of pattern is allowed. Luckily enough, where we're going, the ladder frame on the rear is allowed. Uh, a lot of places it's not allowed, it's got to be diamond. So check into that too before you start making your own. Uh, another thing as well is uh, a lot of people give me a heads up saying you can't make your own, they've got to be by the Australian standards, it's in the rules and regulations. Uh, look, I've dove into the uh, regulations for both New South Wales and Victoria. Uh, I can't sit anywhere in the legisla legislation, sorry. Uh, where it's supposed to be it's to a set standard. You're only saying where they're required and when they're required. So look, that's why for this video, purpose of this video, off-road use only. So, do a bit of research before you build your own. Uh, luckily enough, where we're going, we're going to be completely legitimate. Uh, yeah, just make sure you do your research first. You don't want to be caught out doing the wrong thing. Okay, so the tools are needed. Marking pen just to mark which chains to cut and not uh, get it wrong. I've got a big monkey wrench that's just to help bend the chain open. Multi-grips, bending the chain. I've got a hammer and uh, a, uh, like a chisel. 
That's just because I've got huge bolt cutters from work. Um, they're actually too big for this job and they don't cut all the way through. So the hammer and the um, chisels just to help finish that cut off. And um, my little welder. I've just got a stick welder, so I'm going to weld all those chains back together. So once you got it off the tire, after you dummied it all up, it looks pretty simple. It's just like a little chain ladder. And um, yeah, I've just got to bend the chain back and put a spot well on it. That way they can't come undone. So probably take an hour to do that, I reckon, maybe less, once I get it all set up. Well, there and there. What seemed to be the hardest part was just bending the chain back together. Just trying to get all the excess chain out of the way. Not hit your fingers, bend it the right way. Now I'm just going to put a tack weld in all those cuts and it's done. It takes a bit of stuff and getting this set up right. And once you've got it right, you can copy it for the other tyres. So take time for the first one, get it right, and everything else is easier then. I want it a little bit slack. You can buy cams for them. I'll see if I can find some to make it tight real easy. Until then, I'll just use, use these um, quick locks or chain connectors. So the rear tires are done, pretty easy to make them chains up, uh, it didn't take too long at all really. Uh, but I'm going to tackle the front ones now and I'm going to make them a little bit more complex. I'm going to put some diagonals across the tread pattern to help with steering and braking uh, and there'll be a lot more chain involved. So it's going to be a little bit more fiddly, more time consuming, more chain, more weight as well. But I'm willing to um, tackle it and see how we can um, build it up and see how we go. Let's get into it. Well, front one's done. That took some effort, that took some time and fiddling and backwards and forwards and changing lengths and stuff. Yeah, I like it. Um, but I'm really happy with the design and mm -hmm. how it looks. Um, you can see why it'd be so much better for steering than just the horizontal chains. So we've got these links across the middle here. So, like I said, I had to shorten every one of those horizontal ones. Shorten these ones twice. It just took a lot of time. The second one that we'll make will be a lot easier. All day. <laughs> Not all day, I slept in. But that looks great. Looks really good, doesn't fly around at all. Mm. Still got to pinch them shut. Pinch them all shut and weld them up. Still there. And then it just copy really the design for the, um, the really second good. one. Yeah, it's working great, isn't it? Mm. It's going to be a lot harder when you're in the cold. Yeah, when and, you got cold hands. And it's on a truck, so. Yeah, when it's on the car, yeah, it'd be a bit harder putting them on, so we'll. Very strong ones. So I'm glad we got it at home. We can practice a few times before we go anywhere. 
Watch it doesn't fall on you, honey. They're heavy. I know. <laughs> Alright, we'll get stuck in making the second set. So this is what the uh, front chain looks like. A lot more in it, a lot more involved, a lot more pieces, a lot more weight. Uh, but it'll give us that steering that we want. So, um, yeah, it'd be good. Can't wait to actually yeah, test it out. Anyway, I'm going to clamp them all together, weld them all up, and then duplicate it all for the, um, the other tyres. Well, I got them on. Took a bit of stuff from around. Actually, I had to make them about four lengths longer, and then I can just slowly, you know, get them tighter and tighter and shorten the lengths. Um, so that's just one thing I'll have to do for the other set, make them a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have a few test drives in the backyard here, and then I'll call it a day. Alright, so all the chains are all made up. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a test now. I'm gonna fit them with the tires down on about 26 psi. See how easy they are to fit and uh, go for a bit of a test drop because we don't have long left before we leave. So run out of time to give them a real good test. They're pretty easy to fit with 25. I was a bit worried with them bagging it. The, um, the shape of the tire will change a little bit and it might be really difficult to put the chains on, but uh, if anything, it was easier, I reckon, so. Okay, so I used about 40 meters, probably a bit under, probably about 38 meters of chain all up. A lot of it went into the front. Uh, surprising how much went into it. So I'll put the price in how much the chain cost. We used, we got two links for each tyre and then three straps for each tyre to keep the tension on there. If I can find some cam bolts for these chains, it'll be even better, a lot easier to fit up. Uh, but yeah, all up, it was a little bit over the cost of hiring a set of chains for four days. So for us, we've always got them now. Uh, they're the right size for the car. I know how to fit them, so we are ready to rock and roll. Bumpy rod, it's no chains on. You can only assume it's like this for everyone. I don't know. I can't corrugated a road. I think you're supposed to stay under 40, so. Well, first test drive complete. Um, yeah, like I was saying, it's really rough in there, it's really bumpy. But I suppose that's what you get with driving on a thick chain, you know, it's a 5mm chain all the way around. Of course it's not going to be a flat ride, smooth ride. Um, yeah, not expecting that, although I wasn't really thinking about it. So, um, yeah, I suppose the main thing is you've got to keep your speed down when you've got snow chains on. Probably not as bad if you just got them on the back. The front ones are probably a lot more chain, a lot more weight. 
Um, definitely feel more vibration through the steering wheel. So look, fingers crossed we don't have to use them too often, but we've got them if we need them. And have a look at what it does to your, um, your driveway. It certainly aerates it. So I've had the chains for about a week now. Uh, I keep running through my mind a better way of tightening them up rather than the, uh, the rubber straps. We, got some, we had some 10 mil uh, turnbuckles in the shed, so I threw them on and actually works really well. So um, yeah, just dumbing them up now. I can fit the chains a lot looser, so it's a lot easier to fit. And then we've got a lot tighter fit afterwards. And I think these will give it a lot more strength. I was a bit worried about with the, the rubber straps them coming loose under load or twisting or uh, doing who knows what so yeah happy with this sometimes you just got to give yourself a bit of time to think about the ideas and, and the problems and you can find your own solutions pretty easy sometimes all right everybody that's this week done thanks for watching hope you uh, learn a few things hope you um hope you're interested and give it a go yourself because it wasn't too hard nothing technical a couple of weekends um wasn't that expensive too about the price of a um, hiring a set for four days so yeah i'm happy with them we've always got them we're gonna use them this trip and hopefully we'll use them in the future as well put it all in a little box too so everything's in there that i need i've got the little blocks that i drive onto they're hard plastic not timber timber always seems to crack under the weight of the vehicle so i've got the blocks got all the chains i've got gloves i've got all the straps all in one box I put cardboard in between each layer of chain so they don't get all tangled up. Now well, let's um, pack up. And... What are you barking at, boy? Pack up, service this uh, car before we go, give it a good grease as well. And um, yeah, not long now till we leave. <laughs> I'm getting tired though, I'm ready for a holiday.